Thank you. It's uh, really quite, I mentioned to Aaron, I, I, uh, prior to working in the OHL, I was a youth hockey coach and junior B coach for the St. Thomas Stars, and I attended a lot of coaches' conferences. So to be up here on the stage is uh, really quite humbling. And uh, I, I applaud all of you to take the time that you have over the last uh, three days or so to, uh, to learn and to get better, because uh, the game is really in a, a unique spot, and it's in our hands and responsibilities as coaches and leaders to be able to continue to grow it. And um, I'm here today to talk about what we do in, in Kitchener and uh, our model and, and how my philosophy as the chief operating officer is to put our people first. And everything that I do around our business uh, and our hockey operations is centered around my staff, and my players. And I'm just going to walk you through a little bit of the program and uh, our organization from a background, uh, talk to you about what we call the Kitchener Rangers way, show you our, our model and how we put our programs into place with some action and some results. And then uh, I'll, I'll challenge you a bit, you know, steal this idea. But, but as I say, the game is really uh, in our hands to take it forward. And, and I challenge you to try to make the game better. I'll share one quick story with you. That's clearly not me. The, the two photos up there, right? Uh, that is Joe Thornton. I was fortunate enough to play in the Ontario Hockey League with the Kitchener Rangers and the London Knights. And in uh, 1997, uh, I finished my, my OHL career playing for the London Knights on a really bad hockey team. We only won 13 games. So if anybody has only won 13 games in a 68 game regular season, it's a long year. All right, and uh, the London Knights, though, did a really nice thing for Joe when he played for the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. On January the 10th, 1997, Joe Thornton had just won gold with Team Canada. He's from St. Thomas, Ontario, about 20 minutes from London. So the London Knights, we hosted the Sioux Greyhounds. We were dead last in the Western Conference. Jumbo's team was first in the Western Conference. And the way that this day went, the London Knights brought out Joe and his family to center ice to recognize him for winning gold with Team Canada. So really nice thing to do for an opposing player. And uh, as the, the, the puck drops, my teammate Rico Fada goes down the ice and scores 10 seconds into the game. So we are fired up as a team. We think we got a chance to win two points. And when you only win 13 hockey games, any chance to win is something that you get excited for. But as it was Joe Thornton's night uh, in recognizing him, it ended up being his night as that game ended up a 15 to one final. They outscored us 15 to nothing over the next 59 minutes and 50 seconds. I think I was probably like minus seven or eight or something. I don't really know. But uh, I carry around the game sheet to, to, to show to people that I'm not making this up. I wish I could. Uh, but we lost 15 to nothing and just some of the highlights of there. You can see my name. You can see Joe's name. You can see the final score. And Joe himself was the first star. Uh, real special experience that for me that I'll never forget in being on the ice of somebody like uh, a future Hall of Famer, in my opinion, uh, past Hart Trophy winner, so on and so forth. So anyways, just a little story uh, to, to kick things off. The Rangers. So the Kitchener Rangers. We are uh, one of the longest... Uh, standing franchises in the Canadian Hockey League. We just celebrated our 60th season. And the one thing about the Rangers that makes us unique in the way that we have to operate is, is we are not owned by a single owner. So the Rangers are a community-owned franchise. A lot of people believe that we're owned by the city of Kitchener, which isn't the case. We're actually owned by our season ticket holders. So we have approximately 5,000 season ticket holders, which means I have 5,000 bosses. Uh, we're structured not unlike the Green Bay Packers or the Real Madrid Soccer Club. With that, though, comes a greater responsibility in my view. We have a very diverse community in the Waterloo region in Kitchener. We have a greater uh, responsibility to be involved in the community from our community appearances and engagements. We have a higher responsibility to give back, whether it's through financial donations or, uh, or community appearances and, and so on and so forth. So we we have an obligation to operate maybe a little bit differently than the traditional CHL franchise. Unique story, the way that it came to be, is Eugene George is a local Kitchener businessman. And the franchise used to be owned by the New York Rangers. And in 1967, uh, the local businessman Eugene George uh, actually purchased the team uh, and, and, uh, from the New York Rangers uh, for the sum of $1. 
and he turned around, and as opposed to making it a private franchise, he turned around and gave it to the community and to the season ticket holders. So we have a board of directors, which I report to as the chief operating officer, and we operate under a community premise. And as, as I say, that's important to understand how we operate in investing in our people, both from a player's and a staff side. And this is our team. This is, this is my family, aside from my real family, uh, with my wife and two boys. But this is my family on a daily basis that I have responsibility for. Uh, 24 players, 18 full-time staff, seven part-time staff, the 39-member board, which is large, uh, about seven interns. And everything that we do in Kitchener, I try to include as many of these individuals as I possibly can. So any training, any education, any uh, player unique programs, I try to transfer them into our staff and our people. Why? They're the most important asset. Hands down, your people are your most important asset. I truly believe it, I live it. I, uh, I, f I feel as though as a leader, my job is to serve them. So it's not about Joe. It's not about Joe as the COO. It's not about Coach Joe. I'll share with you in a second on, on that, in that uh, piece. My job is to serve these 49 people, 25, 24 players, 25 full-time staff, on a daily basis to help them achieve their goals. One of the first questions I ask people when I hire them or interview them is, where do you want to be in three years? And a lot say, I want to be in the NHL. Okay, how do I get you there? That's my job to invest in them, to serve them, to ensure that they get to where they want to be, yet still meeting our organizational goals and, and objectives, which is a really tricky balance, but it can be done. And so these are our people. When we look at our people and how does it fit, this is our model. So on a daily basis, anyone that I work with, hopefully you can see that okay, I really believe development is holistic. It's very deep. It's not just on ice or off ice. I believe that if you don't uh, really encompass, these are sort of the eight core values that I have believed to be super important in developing people. You may take this model and say that there's nine. You may take this model and think that there's seven. Whatever that number or whatever it is, it's not just on ice and off ice anymore as, as we continue to see this game grow and evolve. It's much deeper than that. And if you miss any of those areas, in my view, I don't think that your people can perform to the highest level that you need to be able to have success. And I say people, I have a Toronto Marlies uh, logo up there because I'm also a youth hockey coach. I coached last season for the past, season, past three seasons of the Toronto Marlies uh, hockey team. Uh, we were the U12 team last season. I have the U13 team uh, next season. What I really love about this model is I can take this framework and I can apply it to a U12 hockey player, and I can take this framework and I can apply it to an OHL pick, an OHL player who might be a first round NHL pick. And so within each of these eight pieces within my model, there might be dedicated people who specialize in, you know, I just sort of rip, rip around the wheel there, tactical. Those are your three on twos, your five on threes, your technical, skating, skills, passing, your training side. That's your off ice. So you can see that you can put a person who's responsible for each of the pieces of the development model, which is part of my team and my family, who can then help to develop your people. This logo or this, this model uh, is, is um, I guess, designed this way with the logo and the people in the middle for a specific reason, because it's not about, once again, it's not about me, it's about the individuals. And so performance, community, uh, there is a responsibility for all of us, whether I'm at a U12 hockey player or an OHL player, to be involved in our community. Volunteerism. Character. Those are your daily values. What do you live by? What do you believe in? How do you grow those things? Mental. This is probably one of the most important areas in our game that we have to be uh, uh, mindful of and considerate of with all of these uh, young players that we work with is in reference to not only mental performance, but mental health, and what are we doing to enhance mental health. And continuous learning. I, I believe that learning uh, never stops. It shouldn't stop. And so at the OHL level, whether I'm dealing with an OHL player, maybe they are taking a, a, a university course, or maybe we've invested in providing a financial literacy program. 
or uh, when, I, when I'm dealing with a U12 hockey player, we talk about school all the time with our parents. But this is our model, and I live this, and I breathe it. I try to do the very best job that I can and live and breathe this every single day with my players and my staff. Anyone who works with me, both at youth hockey coaching or within the Kitchener Rangers, sees this model, and I ask them if they understand it and if they believe in it. And if they believe in it, now we've got a really strong uh, group of people working together to invest and put our, our individuals first. Some examples of our programs that we then use. So we've got the model, we've got our people, we've got the model, and then we've got our programs that then we begin to execute. And, and it can be wide ranging from, you know, uh, just a, a regular skating program at youth hockey. It could be wide ranging from, uh, you know, your strength and conditioning program. But these are some of the unique programs when I drill down into character and community. So I'm going to use that as a bit of the case study here because as coaches, you, you'd probably know way more than I do about the technical, the tactical, some of the off-ice stuff. But we've spent a lot of time in Kitchener, and certainly I, I have with my youth hockey uh, uh, coaching, on character and community. So within our character and community, these would be programs that would fall under that category within the model. And we're unique. Um, we have lots of certainly great resources that I have access to in Kitchener. Um, but all of these things are to enhance our player experience and our staff experience. These are our, there's all costs related to, to all of these programs that as an organization, I choose to invest dollars in for our people, um, but are all for the best interest of helping our people grow. Because as I say, if you miss, if you miss one of these categories of whether it's development of character or community, or mental performance, I believe that your performance, uh, overall performance, will suffer. So in Kitchener, we have what's called the Blue Crew, and that's a, simply a, a partnership with our local Waterloo uh, Regional Police Services where our players head into local schools to talk about anti-bullying. We have an alumni mentorship program where we have two Kitchener Ranger alumni, Mark Frazier and Ben Finelli, that act as big brothers towards all of our current players. Our players go through a weekly player survey. We, we do a financial literacy program for all of our players and all of our staff. We have leadership training. So we have a unique program that uh, we, we utilize for all of our players and all of our staff. We really, because of our uh, diverseness within the community, have spent a lot of time in our ED&I programming. So we have uh, reconciliation training that our, our staff will take place uh, this summer. We have enhanced our mental wellness programs for all of our staff and for all of our people. We have enhanced our, the OHL has some great league programming, but what we've done is we've tried to enhance some of those league programming. We've uh, taken our, our sexual support center uh, in Waterloo Region and, and formed a formal partnership with them where our players actually participate in four uh, in-season training programs at two hours each. The league program doesn't ask for that, we've enhanced it. Our staff are uh, really involved in You Can Play and uh, uh, 2S LGBTQ plus training. And we have a BIPOC program that gives uh, scholarships awarded to members of the BIPOC community uh, in the Waterloo region, along with athletic scholarships to offset their um, uh, sport costs. So again, it's, it's, it's a model. Now we have programming. And then what we do is we start to execute. So we put things in place have a plan, follow our programming, and we execute. I can't do this all on my own. So one of the things that, uh, you know, although I have all these, you know, experiences and I have a great staff, I'm not afraid to say I don't know what I don't know. And use your resources. So today, this is great. You know, over the last three days, I'm sure you've had the chance to network with people and meet. Um, but utilize your resources to help you grow to build your programming. And there's lots of stuff that's out there that's free. So just a bit of an action that I've always done is I reference the NHL's commitment to change when it relates to any of my community programming. And the NHL website through Rico Phillips and Kim Davis have lots of amazing resources that can guide you when you start to build things that are unique and that are outside the regular scope of technical, tactical, off-ice training. So use your resources. And I reference this all the time to be able to put action in place. So I build the program, I have the people, we have the model, 
We have the programming, and then we put it to action. And our action, just in our, this is just simply towards our ED&I programming as it relates to uh, you know, awareness. Uh, we, we have BIPOC training, HDA education training, LGBTQ training, our reconciliation training. We have allyship. So we stand up in Kitchener for what's wrong, and we, 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 we make sure that we do what's right. We've removed fans for inappropriate language. We HDA tape out uh, for hate, and, and that's just simple messaging that allows for people to know that our environment is safe and inclusive. And we, we're advocates. We allow our platforms in Kitchener to be used for the promotion of and the awareness of things like BIPOCs, our BIPOC scholarship, our You Can Play game, or any of our, our enhanced programming. So again, it all kind of ties together if you can, you take your model, you take your people, you put things to action, and now, ultimately, you hopefully have some results. And I'm really proud, I get often asked what do I enjoy most about my, my job? And uh, what it really is is working with my staff. And uh, there's lots of fun things I get to do, and, and, and as we all get to do in this wonderful game. But the most proud I am of, are, is when people advance, and I help them to achieve their goals. That, that makes me really excited. And uh, just this season alone, uh, and, and I think this sort of ties in together that our program works, Hendrix Haynes uh, was our analytics, um, director of analytics and video coach. He just got hired by the Calgary Flames. Dominic Henning was our director of broadcasting and team services. He got just, hired, just got hired by the Anaheim Ducks and the San Diego uh, Gulls. Both Carson Rakoff and Hunter Brustavich are likely going to be top three NHL picks. All five, all four of these people follow this model, whether they know it directly or not. The staff would, both Hendricks and Dom, would be aware of the model that, that I showed to you and how to kind of work that wheel on a daily basis. The players, not so much. They're, they're worried about you know, showing up and playing hockey and everything else, so it becomes our responsibility as leaders and as staff to guide them through it. Finally, as it ties together, the U12 team that I coach won the GTHL championship. And again, it's not about me as the coach, but the U12 players with my assistant coaches in the Toronto Marlies work through this model. So we can make it age appropriate, take it all the way up with the focus in the eight key areas and the results are here. We've advanced staff, we will advance players and it can show that you can have team success at both the youth hockey level and at the highest level or, or one of the highest levels of the Ontario Hockey League. As I wrap up here, you know, the, the challenge that I mentioned to you, and I, as I said out of the gate, the game is in our hands, and the game is in the future hands of our players and our people. The challenge that I have for you is to really uh, dig in deeper as it looks toward developing your individuals and your people. So as the chief operating officer, I have these 49 people that I have to lead. If you're the hockey coach, you have your 17 skaters that you have to lead, that should be your first priority. If you're the general manager, maybe you have your staff and your players, so there's layers to it. And depending on how granular you want to get depends upon, I think, your role within your organization. But it all starts with leadership. And at the very top, as leaders, we have to step out, do things that are potentially uncomfortable at times, but we have to have a plan. And when we have our plan, and we really believe in it, whether it's eight or six or whatever, whatever that model might be to invest in the people, you can really start to do some great things. I strongly encourage never stop learning. Uh, I, I, a lot of talks I have, uh, or I, that I've done in the past, I talk about you know, webinars or certificate courses or uh, lunch and learns, uh, reading books. But we have a responsibility, if you're gonna lead, to continue to learn. And uh, it might be on cutting edge technology, it could be on, uh, it could be on BIPOC, it could be, um, it could be anything. But you have to ensure that you are continuing to learn as a leader and you're pushing that through to all your people within the organization. So don't stop learning. We are all agents of change and I really believe that. So if this game is gonna grow and we're gonna get better, 
Each of us have a responsibility in the positions that we're in as either coaches or administrators. Each of us have a responsibility to take the game forward. And if we don't, the game can end up in a bad spot. But as we do, and just being here, learning like this, is helping to increase uh, and, and, and make great change for our sport, which is super, super important. We have the greatest game in the world, but we all have a responsibility to be agents of change, hopefully in a positive way. Use your resources. Do not ever, in my view, as I say, uh, I'm, I'm the first to say I don't have an answer to that. I'm the first to say, you know what? I'll find out. I'm, I, I really think that you should use your resources as much as you possibly can to learn and to be able to support you in whatever program or model that that might be to put in place to help investing in your people and to help your players or your people develop. And, and as I say, create your own Rangers way. I don't know what that might be for each of you, whether you're a U12 hockey coach or you're uh, maybe an American League coach or you're an NHL, but what is your way? What, what is your model? And you do have to have a path and you do have to have a plan and you got to put it in place with hopefully the intention of putting your people first. And if you do that, the game will be in a great spot. You'll be in a great spot. Hopefully you'll find yourself really enjoying what you do because uh, it's, it's, it's uh, very satisfying when you're able to help people achieve their goals and get to where they want. And that starts with investing and finding your own way. I thank you so much for your time today. All the best to you uh, in, in the future of the season, but thank you very much.